Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about the Marconi Velvet Tone record. Very, very famous early label made by the Columbia Phonograph Company. And the thing is, it was based on the inventor Marconi, who, of course, is the developer of wireless. Now, they went through a whole song and dance about the fact that they asked him to come up with a special surface that would make the record, well, basically unbreakable and, and the like. Actually, Marconi had very little to do with the record, to be honest. Uh, a lot of the work was all done by John McDonald, who was a phenomenal uh, inventor working for the Columbia Company. And the thing is that the Marconi Velvet Tone record started with a splash. But they made a slight mistake in the beginning of the issuance of the records. Now, the records were only issued for about a year, year and a half, because they were an abysmal failure. And I'll explain that to you in just a moment. Uh, I want to let you see some of the labels, because there's various labels for this very short-lived record. This is the first issuance of a Marconi Velvet Tone. Now, I want you to look carefully here at the picture of Marconi. If you notice, he's got quite a substantial forehead there in the picture. Now, he didn't have a picture. They didn't have a picture of him with, with his toupee. He was without toupee in that picture. And Marconi had a cow. He was very, very big into his image. So they had to redo the picture and change it. So here is the redone Marconi label with hair. And, of course, these were not very successful. There's several reasons. First off, let me let you look in the back here. Probably one of the best things you could do here is stop this, and then you can read this whole thing, all the conditions and stuff. But the one thing is, it required you to buy a special needle to play these records. That no needle would work on except for the special um, needles, which cost 25 cents. The record itself was quite expensive to begin with. Um, but as you can see on the back here, of course, it says that you have to use the special needles and that uh, if you don't, you'll ruin the record. Well, the problem with the record was this. You could play it with that special record, but you couldn't take that. You couldn't, you couldn't, you could use that special needle, but you couldn't change it. You had to keep it in and only play Marconi Velvet Tones. The minute you took it out, it was no good. So what have we here? A disaster in the making. By the way, this is the sleeve that they came in. Just probably let you see what a Marconi sleeve looks like. It has the caution here. Very important. Also, it mentions that it's as wonderful as wireless. It's a really amazing, amazing record. They were a disaster, didn't last long, and then they tried one more thing. They tried the South American trade, but this was a double-sided jobber, a double-sided Marconi. Pretty interesting, and then they just let it go because... No one was making any money. Marconi was, well, what can I say? Marconi was busy with other things. And Columbia, once again, with great fanfare, had done something very different and usual. I mean, these are incredible records. Look at this. Watch this. This is 1907. It's flexible. It's unbreakable. It's incredible. But it was born ahead of its time. The Marconi Velvet Tone record is an incredible chapter in the history of, of the phonograph and of sound recordings. One that basically is interesting, but hardly at all successful.